referring again to points of emphasis. This year, one of the points of emphasis is traveling. We talked about all of the case plays regarding traveling so that we can have a better understanding of the rules. And today, let's follow up and look at plays that look funny, right? We know when, when a play looks funny on the court, the energy from the, uh, the, sta the stakeholders in the game and the stands is immediate. Everybody, ah, that's a travel. What are you looking at, right? So we're looking at those plays today. Let's get started. Let's look at plays. Stick around. Greetings. Welcome back to another episode of Five Play Friday, the show where we look at game video so that we can get better as basketball officials. Greetings again, everybody. My name is Greg Austin with abetterofficial.com. We craft video to help basketball officials get better and take control of their officiating career. If you are new to the channel, take a moment. If this is good content for you, hit like, but also subscribe and notify so you don't miss out on any of our new content. We live stream every Wednesday and Friday. Join us for the live stream. Put your voice in the game so we can all get better together. All right, fantastic. This week we are focusing on one of the points of emphasis for the upcoming season. We are focusing on traveling. In our previous basketball rules expert, we talked about case plays which involve the funky, the unusual, players going to the floor, etc. Um, and how those plays are to be properly adjudicated. And today we're going to follow up by looking at play clips regarding traveling so that we can have a better understanding of the rules and restrictions regarding traveling. Whenever there's a point of emphasis about traveling, it's not, oh, we need more traveling violations. No, no, no. We have too many. We need fewer traveling but No, no, no. More accurate traveling rulings not putting a whistle on legal plays, putting a whistle on illegal plays, and so the game is better. Hey, before we get started on the show, though, allow me a chance to thank our fantastic show supporters. Gerald Mazzucci, Les O'Connor Jr., Jason Hayes, Sylvia Bigot, and Scott Calvin. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? You can always buy us a coffee, and you know I'm going to put a link in the show notes below. Awesome. All right, we're looking at plays today regarding traveling. Um, we're going to have a pretty good volume of plays. Traveling plays are short, right? Remember when we do correctable error plays, we got a long video because a lot of things have to happen. Traveling plays happen almost in an instant, so... We can go through quite a few, and we're going to get started in just a second. Yeah, officials grasp for what they can, I think, uh, grasp for what they think they can use as a mechanism to help them with traveling rulings. But in the end, of course, traveling it involves the officials having a absolute understanding of the pivot foot and an absolute understanding of the rules and restrictions. And we are looking at traveling plays today. Let's take a look at our very first play clip. We have a traveling violation ruled by the lead official on this play. When we look at traveling plays, right, there's real time, and we need to make a judgment on a play in real time, and then we can utilize slow motion in an effort to fully understand what is occurring on a play, right? Sometimes a player's footwork is so quick, it leaves us unsure when we make ruling, a, a possible ruling about a play. <clears throat> but we need to know, in this instance, specifically what has happened on this play. Player drives, bounces the ball, jumps off one foot, lands on two feet simultaneously, right? It's, it's close. We don't need to pick nits. 
has landed simultaneously. Is this a legal play to this point? A player is allowed to terminate their dribble, jump off of one foot holding the ball, land on two feet holding the ball, but, and that's legal, but neither foot can then be a pivot foot by rule. So when the player ultimately steps again, they have traveled at that point. So understanding where the illegal comes. Remember we talked about when we look at plays, unusual, let's say our brain takes time to process, something funny has happened, there's energy in the building or what have you, right? We're waiting for the illegal alarm to go off, right? I see the play, I see everything about it, but nothing about it says to me illegal. And when that illegal cur occurs, then we act upon it. So in this instance, we have an accurate ruling on the play. This is a traveling violation by rule. And the reason is after the player legally landed on two feet, they then took a, moved one of their feet and they are not allowed to do that by rule. Traveling violation, call correct. You can have a situation where a player executes a maneuver, right? And we were talking about a, the a comparison to the Olympics. The player executed the maneuver, and let's say they, they got a 9.8, right? They didn't get a perfect 10, right? So, and we talked as well that by, if, by the laws of physics, a player cannot actually land both feet simultaneously, right? One has to land before the other if we're looking at the smallest increments. What's the spirit and intent of the rule, right? The player jumps and, uh, and lands simultaneously. Simultaneously is not a, it offers us some room in my judgment, right? It offers us some room. So that's how I would defend that, Mike. You know, if you if you want to say, well, I know that they did not land at the same time. Therefore, we are going to rule a violation. You know, that's that's going to be your prerogative. You would expect to have that consistency among your crew on that night. That would be a challenge potentially, but you know, it's all there on the table for us and how we have officiate this play. Let's take a look at our next traveling clip. This clip coming from Freddie Krieger, the phenomenal Freddie Krieger from the state of Michigan, a fantastic resource for basketball officials and a great friend online, supplied some uh, clips. So we have a play where obviously something funny has happened on this play, right? What do we expect? The energy, we see the student section, you know, the energy in the building is, oh, you can't do that. Right. But again, we're waiting for something in our brain to say something illegal has occurred, not that something funny or unusual or out of the timing of it was unusual, etc. Something illegal by rule. Now, what is a player holding the ball, which this player does in this instance? They are holding the ball. What are they allowed to legally touch to the floor and what are they allowed? They are not allowed to touch the floor. We know that they can touch their hands and their feet. Hands and feet, legal. A knee, an elbow, a backside, all illegal while holding the ball going to the floor, but hands and feet, legal. So this is a legal play by rule. Great job by the officials. Nobody had a reaction. Oh, that looked funny, right? Whistle on the play. And again, we want to train ourselves we want to train ourselves so that we see plays, we recognize, we process, and we're waiting for something illegal to happen. If I know what the illegal things are, then, uh, all right, I see the play, but it's not meeting any of these illegal criteria, all right? So it's just play on, play on, baby. Fantastic job, a display of athleticism. The officials do a great job. If we did pick nits about the officiating crew, 
right? Center official, the, the three-point attempt is from their primary coverage area. They mark. I don't think they stay with the shooter, right? We'd want to see that landing and that backside hitting the leg, whether there's any displacement on the play. Our trail official disconnects slightly. We're always looking at all the things when we analyze our game video. If I was the trail on this play and I saw myself disconnect, as opposed to stepping down for rebounding action, right? We're in the fourth period with a minute to go. I don't know the situation in the game, but habits, fundamentals, etc. That's what we have on that play. Let's look now at our next traveling clip. Right, obviously a skilled ball handler, you know, uh, that, that, just, that just jumps off, right? Their ability to make this, you know, crossover behind the back here. But what fundamentally what they do is illegal. Why is it illegal, right? Too many steps, etc. No, what makes it illegal is the player has a pivot foot established, right? And lifts the pivot foot, right? So right here, this player is holding the basketball with their left foot on the floor. One, and returns the left foot to the floor. Traveling violation by rule. Right? So it's not, it's not the number of steps. It's whether or not the pivot foot was lifted, a legal play, but then returned to the floor. Right? So a dribbler in this instance, terminates their dribble with a foot on the floor, lifts it, and returns it to the floor. All right, let's look at another traveling play. Right, player drives from the wing, jumps off one foot, lands on two feet. I'm sure even this play uh, would be, everybody would agree this is a simultaneous landing. This is a legal play by rule. No, uh, no whistle by the officials, so adjudicated pr correctly. But we need to, it's great to see these plays and to see them and understand why it's legal why it's not illegal, right? So our player here jumps off one, lands on two, and then re jumps and releases a try, legal by rule. Our crew does a good job positioning on the play, right? The lead uh, with the jog across rotation our center recogn or our trail old trail new center recognizes and they know that boom this play right here this curl away from the lead that it belongs to the center they have a great open look on the play have nothing on that right we see our trail disconnect on the release again these are the things we're looking at but we're, we're looking at the <laughs> the play on its merits whether or not this is traveling this is legal by rule and it's important to understand that so, say let's take a look at our next play. Right, we got a little theme here. Player jumps off one, lands on two, all legal, but then lifts one of their feet and returns it to the floor, illegal by rule, right? If you want to pick nits on the initial drive, we can look at that play, right? Hey, yay, yay. 
So a player catches the ball and moves their left foot, right? So what does our brain say? Right foot pivot, right? That's what we need to do every time a ball handler catches the ball, right? Establish the pivot foot, recognize which foot it is, right? Slight movement of the pivot foot, right? This is uh, movement in place. Whether or not it even leaves the floor is a question. Going to be hard to pick up. Jumps off one, lands on two simultaneously, right? Legal by rule, but then lifts and replaces the floor. Not legal by rule, right? So we look at those. We look at those plays. We recognize them for what they are. So that when they occur in our game, we can recognize the legal plays and recognize the illegal. Okay. All right. We have looked at several plays involving jumping off one, landing on two. Right. We should have as we've seen legal, we've seen illegal. We have an understanding of that. We'll have, we'll come back to that with a few plays later on, on a step back situation. But right now, let's look. Let's take a look at our very next play scenario. A phenomenal clip. <laughs> Oh boy! Imagine let's put let's let's just jump into the officials' uh, position here. State final. Everybody's there. TV broadcast. All the things. You have this play, which first of all, right, a throw-in play. We've got uh, is the player legally in bounds? Is this a backcourt violation? All of the things. Loose ball. Athletic play. Right. And we, and we come up with a traveling violation because everybody, I mean, the announcer on the play, right? Everybody's, everybody knows that's a, tra yo, you can't do that. Come on. Oh, you can't do that, right? But what's the illegal? What is the illegal on this play? That's what we have to ask ourselves. So that's where our throw in ends. The ball is tipped. We have no team control on the court, so backcourt violation is not in play. The ball is loose on the floor. Player dives, right? And at what point is she holding the basketball? Is she holding the basketball prior to rolling over? And would that be illegal? Right? The ball is on the floor, 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 floor. She is on her side and lifts the ball off the floor. Slides with the basketball and passes to a teammate, right? I have this as a legal play. I don't see the illegal. I'm waiting for the illegal. As we talked about, many officials are going to make judgments based on rolling right? And what is rolling over? A player on the floor holding the ball cannot roll over. What is rolling over? What does that mean? How is it defined in the rules book? It's not defined in the rules book. So some officials feel that if there's any rolling action, a violation has been committed. This play would be legal by rule in NCAA women because it specifically addresses sliding and rolling player and then comes to a stop. In high school, it does not say sliding and rolling. It says sliding, etc. So, but then when we looked at the case plays on Wednesday, we could see that in the language there was rule, there was room for uh, interpreting that sliding and rolling was a factor. So this, this is the kind of play that's usually going to create disagreement among basketball officials. But again, I'm saying, where is the illegal? But that's a phenomenal play, one that I really like, and um, it just has so many dynamics, right? Put yourself in that position. That play occurs in front of you in this biggest of venues where you, then again, you have all that energy in the building that everybody knows, oh, you can't do that, 
right? Uh, great way to look at those plays. And let's look now at our next play clip. Right, a similar play, but simpler. But simpler, but let's look at the similarities, right? Great defensive play, strips the ball, goes to the floor, grabs the ball, and slides on one cheek, as it were, right? You, you can see, like, the, uh, looked like he was potentially attempting to uh, instinctively request a timeout in that situation, but doesn't have the, doesn't, doesn't even actually have control of the basketball. Sits up. Legal, right? Again, if we're, if we're looking at what's, where's the illegal part? What, that thing that they did there, okay, that's illegal. That's a traveling violation, right? We have to look at these plays. They're funny. They're different. They're interesting. Stuff's going on. Energy in the building, all of the things, but where's the illegal, right? This player is on the floor, allowed to slide, allowed to sit up, allowed to pass the ball, shoot the ball, request a timeout, allowed to do all of the things. A legal play by rule, officials no call, perfect, perfect, perfect. Hey, let's take a look at another play scenario. Another video. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar, there is a Twitter account called Step Through Joe that has only step through plays, right? Step through plays are legal by rule. Which is the pivot foot, right? Now we see a little bit of this going on with the feet. Do the feet leave the floor? No, legal. Which is the pivot foot? That's our first objective. Oh, pivot foot was lifted. So we must. No. Pivot's foot's. Pivot feet? The pivot foot may be lifted by rule. The player may not return the pivot foot to the floor prior to releasing the ball. This is a legal play by rule. This is a step through play. Step through plays are legal, right? Step through plays are fantastic. When we have skilled post players in our game, this is phenomenal, right? We want skilled players. We want deft actions by ball handlers, right? We do not want to. I mean, if you're going to have a step through play, a step through play, have you been in the gym practicing? Yes, you have, right? We don't want to penal. And that's of course the point of emphasis and why we have a point of emphasis, not because. We are allowing necessarily just illegals that need to be fixed, but we have legal plays that we have whistles being put on, right? So we have to understand the pivot foot in this scenario. We have to understand that this is a legal move by rule because the player does not return their pivot foot to the floor. Hey, thanks for joining us today on Five Play Friday. If you are in the mood you could do all the things. You could hit like, subscribe, and notify so you don't miss out on any of our content. If you give me a moment, I'd love to thank our phenomenal show supporters, Gerald Mazzucci, Les O'Connor Jr., Jason Hayes, Sylvia Bigot, and Scott Calvin. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? You can always buy us a coffee. You know there's a link above, and you know I'll put a link in the show notes below. Fantastic. We have additional video content available. This is a video that I've selected. This is a video that YouTube has selected. Make your choice. Choose wisely. And we'll see you in the very next video. Take care.